All right. Uh, all right. So thanks, thanks very much for the invitation. It's going to be really fun. Um, so just I'm, I'm going to put, so I, I do notes on my computer, so I can easily put them on online. So you can uh, go look at them on that website if you want. OK. So in this first talk, so since the plan is to uh, to have a few lectures and, and really like you know actually cover quite a bit of material about homological mirror symmetry. This first talk is going to be uh, quite vague. I'm going to try and explain what uh, homological mirror symmetry is about and give a summary of uh, what kind of stuff we'll talk about. But it will be much more vague and less technical than the subsequent talks. So. Sorry if that feels like a waste of time. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we're going to be uh, studying invariance of complex manifolds so okay to a first ap approximation M is going to be a smooth manifold J is going to be an integrable complex structure it's just uh, so an endomorphism of square minus one of the tangent bundle which is integrable in the sense you know um, and of course later on they won't have to be smooth manifolds of course we can have other algebra geometric objects, not even necessarily schemes. There'll be other kinds of things coming up. All right, some running terminology. Invariance of a complex manifold. We'll be studying uh, various different kinds of invariance of these. Um, and these are called the B model. So this terminology goes back to a, a paper by Witten, I think. Um, but certainly won't be talking about that. Um, so one example. The closed string B model. Something like a Hodge structure or, uh, whoops, sorry, uh, Hodge structure or periods of holomorphic differential forms. Okay. So there are some, uh, you know, invariants of a complex manifold, and those are the ones we'll mostly be studying in mirror symmetry. Then there's uh, also what we're going to call the open string B model. This will be a category of coherent sheaves on M. So a coherent sheaf, uh, safe for the, you know, if you're not 
super happy with algebraic geometry to start off by thinking of a uh, complex submanifold equipped with a holomorphic vector bundle. Can you just say about that for others to listen? Uh, so this, uh, we will see later on in symplectic geometry uh, in what sense, that basically the, the, in string theory, the closed string B model looks at, deals with things that kind of uh, Riemann surfaces with some kind of cylindrical ends and you think of these, these ends as the, as the strings, so they're kind of closed strings. And the open string B model looks at surfaces which have some kind of boundary conditions and, uh, well, maybe I should, I should more accurately should draw it. Uh, like this, and then your strings are kind of like going between the boundary conditions like that. So, I mean, you know, I've got no idea what this actually means, but that's, you know, we'll see, we'll see when we do symplectic geometry, the invariance will actually at least look like this. Yeah. Okay. All right, so these are the kinds of invariants of complex uh, manifolds and complex geometry that we'll be looking at. All right, let me give myself a bit of room here, get rid of that. So a symplectic manifold we have a, again a smooth manifold and rather than a complex structure it's equipped with a symplectic form which is a two form from the manifold, uh, which is required to be non-degenerate, <coughs> meaning its top wedge power is a volume form, i.e. doesn't vanish anywhere, and closed. Okay, so you can think about this closed condition as being kind of like the integrabil integrability condition for the complex structure. Invariance of symplectic manifolds uh, we call the A model. Again, for uh, as far as math mathematicians are concerned, uh, you know, historical reasons, because this is what Witten called them in uh, in a paper a while ago. So examples of the A model the gromov witten invariants okay so maybe gromov witten invariants are not as familiar as hodge structures and periods of differential forms so these are counts of Holomorphic curves in M and 
the way the symplectic form enters is these have to be weighted by e to the negative symplectic area. Okay, so you might think this looks more like a, a complex invariant since we're looking at holomorphic curves. In fact, it turns out that these gromov witten invariants only depend on a choice of almost complex structure, meaning an endomorphism of the tangent bundle with square minus one and no integrability condition. So the, the complex structure enters in a very flexible way the really important thing is the symplectic structure, which tells you how to weight these counts of curves. Uh, that's that's a, a theorem you can prove. Um, any any symplectic manifold has an almost complex structure like this. Um, is it easy to say how? Uh, I'll be able to say how in, in just a sec, actually, uh, or sketch how, yeah. Okay. You're referring to the paper of, of, uh, of Witten. Uh, can you give us a title or a reference? Uh, uh, the, so I, I know, well, maybe Tudor knows the exact title to you or, <laughs> um, no, okay, so the, So they're called topological twists of a more complicated object called a conformal field theory. Um, so th there's, there's something like this which, as I understand it, is one of these things that's kind of difficult to really define mathematically um, and we're kind of not there to actually look at this thing itself but there are two kind of simpler things you can cook up out of it, the A and the B models. The A model turns out to have to do with symplectic geometry. The B model turns out to have to do with complex geometry. <laughs> I can, I'll, I'll, after the talk, I'll put it up on the, the website, whatever the, that paper is. Okay, so these are the gromov witten invariants. So, uh, examples of gromov witten invariants. Um, well. Number of lines through two points in CPN. So these are two generic points and of course I mean a, a complex line like a CP1 and of course this number is equal to one. Uh, you also have number of lines on a cubic surface. CP3, this is another famous gromov witten invariant. 27 lines on a generic cubic surface. And then we have one that we're particularly interested in because it shows mirror symmetry in a very favorable light, which is ND, the number of degree D curves on quintic threefold M in CP4. So this is a smooth degree five hypersurface in CP4. So we have a 
the first two numbers were computed at least before the, I think this was maybe uh, computed in the 60s or something, and this is the 70s or 80s. Anyway, I mean, these had been known for some time at least. N3 is also some number that I haven't memorized. And then before mirror symmetry, uh, the rest of these counts weren't known. And mirror symmetry fixed this in a very cool way. Sorry? Does it have a natural generated function? Yes, yes. And in this case, is the opposite thing reflected by uh, area? Uh, so the, the degree is, is the cohomology class, which in, in a hypersurface in CP4, the, you know, your the cohomology class of your symplectic form is Poincare dual to a, a hyperplane section, say. So N1 has, to, has symplectic area 1, N2 has symplectic area 2, and so on. So the, the sort of the generating function, as, as Tom said, um, would really look like, well, So I guess to be consistent with that, I should I should really write e to the but you know in in practice we really do write a, a, a generating function um, so I mean the symplectic area appears in in these exponents in the in the generating function there. can substitute T or whatever to get that formula, e to the minus one. Uh, and I guess because there are people here who are, who are interested in this invariant, um, I'll just say that for, for an open symplectic manifold, the closed string A model is uh, symplectic cohomology. Uh, which is also a really interesting invariant, somewhat different from the gromov witten invariants. Well, we even have a co-inventor in the room. Okay. So that's the closed string A model. The open string A model is uh, the Fukaya category. Which um, maybe I should just say it's the subject of the next lecture rather than get into its technical details. But it's a very interesting symplectic invariant of a manifold. Okay. Um, so, for us, the symplectic and complex structures will come together. in a Kähler structure on a manifold. So a manifold will have a symplectic form and a complex structure satisfying a compatibility condition that when you substitute, when you put J in, uh, apply J to the first entry of the symplectic form omega, then you get a two form, well, a two tensor field, and this should be a Riemannian metric. So that's, uh, so there are certainly, uh, you know, 
vast quantities of symplectic manifolds that don't admit any such structure and complex manifolds that don't admit any such structure. Um, but, you know, we're kind of in a, you know, for mirror symmetry at least, these seem to be the ones that are most natural to study, the ones where they come together. And this is also how you, uh, you cook up uh, an, a complex structure compat compatible in the right sense with your symplectic form. If you have the, uh, once you're given a symplectic form, you know, you know that uh, any manifold admits a Romanian metric. Once you've cooked up a Romanian metric, you can, uh, you can cook up an almost complex structure like this. Um, actually, maybe a more convincing thing for me to have said earlier on is that uh, this, uh, this condition about the existence of a two-form uh, whose top power is a volume form means the structure group of the tangent bundle of the manifold gets reduced to SP2N, and that is homotopy equivalent to... Um, to UN, it's also homotopy equivalent to uh, um, GL and C, I guess, whatever you need to reduce the structure group to to get a, a, an almost complex structure on the, the manifold. Okay. So, we've said uh, you know, the kinds of, so we're looking at complex manifolds and their invariants, this o closed string and open string B model, symplectic manifolds and their invariants, closed string and open string. So now we can state what sort of a meta mirror symmetry statement that uh, there exist pairs of spaces, so these won't always be smooth manifolds, but that's a good case to think of to start with. And then equivalences in whatever sense of the word is appropriate. So the A model the symplectic invariants on M, which only depend on the symplectic form omega, they don't in depend on the complex structure, um, is equivalent to the B model on uh, the mirror manifold. So we call these, mani these manifolds mirror to each other. And so you, you know, mirror symmetry basically says that the symplectic and complex invariants get swapped between these two kinds of manifolds. Okay. So, let me just make sure I've got time to get through what I want to get through. It should be okay. Okay. So, of course, symplectic and complex structures come in families. 
So So we'll call script M for moduli space, M simp of M to be the space of symplectic structures on M up to equivalence, which of course means a, a diffeomorphism respecting the symplectic form in the obvious way. Um, And similarly, we'll denote by M subcomplex the manifold, the space of complex structures up to equivalents. And now, you want to make the statement that uh, this equivalence of A and B models should hold in families. Yes, yes, so, uh, so in fact, we'll see they uh, locally, in the cases we're interested in, they, they have the structure of a, of a manifold. Of a, of a certain dimension, which I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Um, yeah, okay, so I probably should, you're right. Um, so, in fact, uh, we really want to look at sort of uh, complexified symplectic structures on M. So, what does that mean? Uh, That means we need a symplectic form uh, together with uh, another two form uh, B and we want to <coughs> We want to weight uh, uh, we actually want to weight our counts of curves by the symplectic area of, of U the homology class of that term, together with a complex, um, a complex term e to the i b of u. Um, I guess in very very quickly, I'm going to stop uh, caring about the the b field or un until much later on. So um, I guess I, you know, of course you need it to to make sense of the uh, well, what I'm about to say, but uh, maybe you can without too much harm, um, you know, not worry about the B field for a while yet. No, no, it's so independent. It's data. Yes, yeah. Okay. So if M and M check are mirror,
then we expect that there are diffeomorphisms between the moduli space of symplectic structures and the moduli space of complex structures on the mirror. And with this identification, the equivalence of A and B models holds in families. Okay. So these diffeomorphisms are called mirror maps. Okay, so it's the, so this is also going to be important, important terminology later. The mirror map is how we identify the space of symplectic structures with the space of complex structures. No, that's, yes, it, it could be. So th this, this B doesn't have uh, restrictions on being non-degenerate or close, well, oh, well, I guess it has to be, okay, it has to be a cohomology class. But it's certainly much more flexible than the choice of a symplectic form. Okay. Uh, yes, that's right. Yes, you don't. Uh, yes, you don't. The, the, I guess the, the point is that um, the moduli space of complex structures is already naturally a, a complex manifold, um, whereas the, the moduli space of symplectic structures has the structure of a, a real manifold locally and we need to add in the, the complex part to make it match up with the moduli space of complex structures. Um. So if we just stay on the symplectic side, the things with different keys will all be diffeomorphic to each other. And they're all supposed to be diffeomorphic to somebody who doesn't know what key is. They're all symplectomorphic, yes. So they're, they're all yeah. diffeomorphic in a way Preserving. Well, I'm I'm not sure I, I know what the, I mean. Everything on this side is diffeomorphic. It's it's just a different choice of this two form with certain properties. Uh, omega that we're making, and then. We're additionally making another choice of this this B. We just uh, uh, I'm not sure what the sorry what's the what's the the question? I mean the so everything on the symplectic side is diffeomorphic. Yes, that's right. Yes. Did that make sense? The it made sense, but it's confusing to even open up. Let's carry on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, 
so the tangent space, I'm a little bit worried I'm not going to get to Maybe finish this. Of, um, the notion of the dual event depends on the choice of the details. The very notion of what M dual is. Uh, Yes, what, 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 we're, what we're saying is points in here, this moduli space, are parameterized by a choice of omega and b. Each such choice gives us a j, a complex structure here. From the same, I mean, I'm asking if the m hat, the underlying k infinity manifold, the m hat, does it know about b or not? No. J, the, the complex structure on the underlying C infinity manifold knows about B. J knows about B, right? Yes. I think you know it's very good. So if you have mirror for, before we start determining, if you have a mirror pair, now you want to do the family, you can just say, you change the omega and the B here, and the J would be on the same underlying model that you are on the first time. Yes. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, now uh, the, so I think I should maybe skip some stuff. Let me say very briefly um, that you have extended versions of these moduli spaces which contain these as sub manifolds and the tangent spaces to these extended versions. Oh. Look like this. So I just feel I should say this because it's the answer to, to Tom's question I, I promised. Um, And the non-extended version here is, so this is, of course, the Hodge cohomology, which gives us the cohomology of M. And so the, the tangent space to the usual space of symplectic structures is just the second cohomology sitting inside all of the cohomology. And this uh, is what we know is the tangent space to the um, set of symplectic structures on a manifold by, by Moses' theorem for symplectic geometry people. And uh, similarly, tangent space to the extended moduli space of complex structures is the direct sum of all cohomology groups of exterior powers of the tangent bundle of our manifold. And this contains The, the tangent space to the usual moduli space of complex structures, which is H1 of M uh, first, first sheaf cohomology of the tangent bundle of M. Um, and so these mirror, uh, mirror maps, these diffeomorphisms uh, give us identifications between the Hodge cohomology and the tangent vector cohomology. And this gives rise, um, in a way I won't say exactly how, to uh, if M uh, and and the mirror are 
like Calabi Yau varieties, then we get this thing where the Hodge diamonds are reflections of each other. Which is where the name mirror in, uh, in mirror symmetry comes from, the fact that we kind of have this reflection about this 45 degree line. Okay. But yeah, so the, the answer to the question about the, you know, the dimensions of the moduli spaces is, is these dimensions of these cohomology groups. Yes, there certainly are. Yeah, and in fact, uh, as far as we're concerned, we will, we will only ever be looking at some formal neighbourhood of some singular point in these moduli spaces. Um, that, that's all mathematicians know how to prove the A and B models are defined, where, where we take these to be basically formal schemes, formal neighbourhoods of a point. But, you know, the philosophy is that it should kind of extend to be much more general than that. Okay. Yeah. Right, because, right, because of course this... Uh, Right, yeah, you, you get... Right, so, so they, they were looking at Calabi Yau threefolds, which basically have one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. And then you have H11 here, and then this is the same by Sir duality, and this is H12. This is the same by complex conjugation. So if you, if you enumerate all these things and look at the values of h11 and h12, you see this, this symmetry because this reflection exchanges them, right? Or are you saying... Yeah, 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 that's, 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 that's what you mean. Yeah, okay. Okay. So... Let me tell you very quickly about closed string mirror symmetry. What kind of mirror symmetry was this just uh, This was still meta mirror symmetry. This was this was <laughs> this was about the the moduli the spaces that parameterize the A and B models. Yeah, yeah, okay, so, so, so here, what, what I'm going to do now is, uh, is plug in what we, you know, one version of what the A model is, yeah. So when, when we're looking at closed string kind of invariants, the closed string A model is the gromov witten invariants of our manifold. The closed string B model, I'll say the periods or, or Hodge structure uh, of the, the underlying complex manifold. Okay, so uh, this is what closed string mirror symmetry should say. We should, if we want to compute gromov witten invariants of our manifold M, we should be able to express them in terms of periods of different holomorphic differential forms on this mirror M check. So this was used to a spectacular effect by uh, Candelas, Della Ossa, Green and Parks to... Uh, predict these numbers ND that I wrote up here for all D. Um, and 
so that you know they they cooked up some M check that ought to be the mirror to the quintic threefold, and they basically computed these these periods, okay, very roughly, um, and this gave them predictions for what these counts of curves should be, and these were these predictions were finally verified and you know verified in much more generality for all Kalabi Yau and Fano complete intersections and Toric varieties by uh, Givental and Lian Yu Liu Yao. by about 96. Okay. So now... Is this the trip for Calabria or...? Uh, no, so, uh, so when... Um, so it was verified for calabria complete intersections in toric varieties is also realized that mirror symmetry holds um, also when M is not Kalabi Yau but rather Fano. Uh, but then it's one of these cases where you don't put a complex manifold here. You put what's called a Landau Ginzburg model, which is uh, um, a variety equipped with a regular function on it. And then defining what you mean by the B model, you have to rethink everything. But that was also verified by the same, the same people, the Fano version of closed string mirror symmetry. Okay. So finally we get to the main topic of these lectures. is open string or homological mirror symmetry. So, So we recall that the open string A model was this Fakaya category that I'll start telling you what it is next time. The open string B model is this category of coherent sheaves of our complex manifold. And mirror symmetry should exchange the two. So we should get an equivalence of categories like this. Um, so this is, uh, so why is this good? Well, one thing, this is expected to imply closed string mirror symmetry. This will be one of the subjects of, uh, that I'll be talking about later on after I've introduced all the various players in this picture. Um, oh, and then, so I promised a joke, so here it comes. So, uh, so, so, so one can say that this means the you know, homological mirror symmetry categorifies uh, mirror uh, closed string mirror symmetry. So uh, when, when I used this word in front of uh, Rahul Pantarapande, who's uh, you know, really into doing Grom of Witten invariants and closed string mirror symmetry, he said uh, the word categorification always reminds him of this, uh, uh, this song or this word, um, Californication, that uh, <laughs> is this... Uh, <laughs> Uh, this slang word that kind of refers to the phenomenon of Californians uh, going somewhere else in the US and, you know, effing everything up. <laughs> so 
the categorification is kind of uh, the same sort of idea. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so so this is uh, this is nice that this uh, this categorical version kind of should imply this closed string mirror symmetry. It's also kind of expected. although still, you know, not so well understood, that uh, this should include higher genus invariants. So, uh, so you're meant to be able to do higher genus gromov witten invariants in terms of the, the algebraic geometry of the mirror family. Uh, and for the quintic threefold, at least, I think, well, the results I told you about before are all for genus zero curves mapping into your manifold. There's also a result for genus one curves due to Alexei Zinger, and then, and then I think things aren't really known. But if it kind of all just popped out automatically from proving this equivalence, that would be certainly something pretty cool. I should say, it's, uh, Certainly, uh, some of Kevin Costello's results are in this direction, but I don't, I don't understand them yet. But he's certainly thought very deeply about how to, what this procedure of getting higher genus gromov with invariants out. So, another thing that we'll see is that Homological mirror symmetry extends to uh, you know, many more cases than this version with the gromov witten invariants that I've um, been telling you about, uh, the closed string version. Uh, I shouldn't say that, that, I mean, there's always a closed string version, but sometimes you need homological mirror symmetry to help tell you what the closed string version of mirror symmetry should be. Um, So we'll be seeing, you know, lots of cases where homological mirror symmetry is really uh, uh, you know, really conceptually simple and, and, you know, sometimes it really is simpler to understand than uh, closed string mirror symmetry, to my mind at least. I guess I, I study it, so, you know, maybe that's an illusion. But we'll, we'll see that there are, you know, very meaningful statements of homological mirror symmetry you can make for a cylinder, for CP1, for a pair of pants, for a torus, for, you know, all sorts of simpler cases where you can get a lot of intuition for what this mirror symmetry is really a about. Um, I guess I could finally say, you know, it's, uh, of course, well, it's pretty well known that the Fukaya category and category of coherent sheaves are really super interesting invariants that really, you know, the Fukaya category has to do with all sorts of gauge theory kind of invariants like, uh, you know, Hagard Fleur theory and stuff like that. And the category of coherent sheaves has to do with algebraic geometry and representation theory. So there's been lots of very fruitful of transport of ideas between the two sides uh, of homological mirror symmetry. So it's a really useful philosophy to learn. So so the plan So the next few lectures will be taken up with a, an introduction to Lagrangian Fleur theory, then the Fukaya category. Then we'll get on to what categories of coherent sheaves are. We'll also see that there are lots of variants on these you know, two basic things. 
is wrapped for Kaya categories, the Kaya Seidel category. Is instead of coherent sheaves, you've got matrix factorizations. So once I've introduced those basic uh, kinds of invariants that homological mirror symmetry has to do with, I'll start looking at examples of homological mirror symmetry, st starting from you know the really simple things where you can really see everything that's going on, up to more complicated things. I'll get on to. the relationship between closed and open string. Invariance. And this has a lot to do with deformation theory. Of our, of our categories. And also, also has a lot to do with finding how you go about finding generators for your for Kaya category, or category of coherent sheaves. And finally, I'll talk about the SYZ conjecture and tropical geometry, which is, so we'll talk about um, the, the program by Mark Gross and Ben Siebert to really come up with a very general construction of mirror varieties and a sort of outline of how to actually prove homological mirror symmetry for these guys. So I should probably stop now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.